Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of the American Landman. Hey, I'm back at my truck where I've been spending a lot of time these uh, past few weeks. And I'm on my way to a brand new property. I got a call on this property from a gentleman that met me when I was out actually out filming another property. And he was uh, somewhat impressed that I was doing these types of posts. And he said, hey, I've got some land I want to sell. Uh, so I'm on my way up there. And this one has a lot of uh, interesting features. We're going to meet the gentleman. Um, I don't know that he'll let me film him, but I'll uh, eventually take a tour of the property and I'll show you around and we'll talk about uh, what I see on this property, kind of the features and benefits and the highest and best use and some comments on how to sell the property. I hope you enjoy this episode. You're watching The American Landman. Okay, well, let's make some comments about this property as we're getting there. Um, uh, it is about 49 acres and it, uh, excuse me, 39 acres, and it has another five acres or so that connects it to a road. So it's actually set off the road a little bit, maybe about a quarter mile in. Um, a couple neat things about this property is uh, A, the seclusion. Um, it would be a great looking uh, place to have a, a small hobby farm or an estate. Um, it's probably subdividable with some permitting and you'd have to bring in a driveway, a road, and maybe some electricity, which can add some extra costs. Um, but a really notable feature is the lake that's on the property. It looks like it actually has some pretty good um, frontage on the lake and that will really increase the value of the property. Um, anytime you have water, especially if it's not all green and uh, you know nasty, if it's taken care of, if it's fishable, swimmable, boatable, obviously, um, it brings a lot of value to a property. Now, we talked a little bit about this property before I, I just agreed to go look at it with the owner, and he does want to subdivide it. The challenge is when uh, you subdivide these properties, there's permitting and there's some engineering that needs to be done, and you kind of move from a uh, just a land sales opportunity to kind of a speculative situation. And as we were talking about that, there was some property on the south side that did have parcels, and they I looked at the prices, and they were all about $16,900 an acre, roughly, for a couple of them that I looked at. Um, and of course, he thought he, he would get that price as well, and I, I said, you know, that's after the development, the cul-de-sac, electricity, and those properties were on the market for quite some time, and he heard that the first developer may have actually went bankrupt while he was trying to sell it. So. It's always a risk when you try to subdivide properties that how quickly are you going to sell it. Now, in a market we have right now, um, there's a lot of buyers and things are going fast. But folks aren't going to pay you for uh, raw land the same price that they'll pay you for something that's improved. So somebody's got to foot the bill. And if you want to subdivide, it's typically going to be you as the owner. So we're going to take a look up here. The next time I pick up, I'll... Uh, I'll be on the property and I'll walk you through it. I'll make some comments and then uh, we'll wrap this video up with maybe kind of what I think the value is in the state that it is with some options that we can build in. So I'll see you when we get there. Okay, we're at the property. Let's head in and take a look. Okay, well here we are out on the property and you can see I'm walking through a pretty nice little bean field, probably about five acres in size. And uh, it's a great opportunity to talk about some topics that we talked about in recent uh, videos and that is transitional land. And that's what the, we have here. I'm probably, I'm gonna say I'm 30 minutes or so, 45 tops from the Minneapolis metro area, which again is the influencer in my uh, part of the country. And you could find this wherever you are, the market that influences uh, the area. And we're in an area that is just 35, 40 minutes drive, obviously rural, a lot of rolling farmlands, but we're not too far away from everything. And we start to evaluate these transitional lands and we start to identify them. This is a great example of that. So what, let's go into that. What do we mean by transitional land? Well, transitional land is simply like what we have here. It's now under crop rotation. There's, there's soybeans out here, uh, corn. It could be wheat. It could be uh, hay. It, but this is currently being farmed and it is considered farmland. But to the folks that live just a couple miles west of me in the Minnesota side of the river, 
this is this is not farmland this is beautiful rolling country land that's a great for building their estate maybe having a horse farm maybe uh just coming out here and building their own little world on a 20 acre lot it goes from being farmland to residential land in the minds of these buyers therefore it transitions into something else so when you look at this property and you start to evaluate the price, you got to take that into account. So before I came out, I did a little research about this property in this area, and I'm not going to give you the exact location, but the average price per acre out here across nine or 10 sales going back two years was about $5,500 to $6,500 an acre. Those are agricultural prices. Properties look just like this, 55 to 75. But just a few miles from here on some properties that I've already sold, I'm selling them uh, anywhere from about $9,200 on the low end to probably $17,000, $18,000 on the high end, with that sweet spot being right around $10,000, $12,000 an acre. Because what was once farmland is now something else. It's transitioned to something else. In the mind of the buyers, they are thinking that this land is got a higher and better use, and that is to put my beautiful home on this property. When I come out here and I look at these properties, you have to kind of start to think about breaking this property down. What are the features and benefits that this property has versus other properties so that you can start to make some comparisons and use a term that we use in real estate all the time that is comps, comparables. The problem with this type of property is that there aren't very many comparables. There's just nothing like this. There's very little. So you're drawing from a, a, a very shallow pool and you're probably reaching out many, many miles around this area to start to create a picture of what this property is worth. But I'm gonna take you around the property. I'm gonna point out a couple things that add value to the property that in my opinion, and at the end here, I'm gonna to try to come up with a price that I think that this property is most likely to be listed at. All right, feature number one is buildability. I'm standing on your future building home, uh, home site right now. I mean, just imagine this. You got sloping, rolling hills. You've got 360 degree views with there's no homes in sight whatsoever. And you're looking over a pond. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. And I could tell you that when I bring people out to this, this is gonna catch their eye because I'm standing on probably somebody's future home. I picture a beautiful home on, on the hillside here, uh, pastures, we've got a little pond that maybe could be dredged out for water source, beautiful white picket fences around here, rolling countryside with horses i mean it's this is gorgeous water is a fantastic feature when combined with some elevation and views and seclusion i'm going to take you down to the water's edge because that's so key water brings value every single time and i tell you what that's the money shot right there all right well let's talk about water okay on this property we actually have two types of water we got a marshland situation here that has some appeal for hunting purposes, let's say. When I came down here, there was wood ducks all over this uh, uh, marshland. There was a crane, uh, There's I saw an eagle flying by off camera here. There's a lot of activity around water. And anytime you have water, water is always an attractive uh, feature, and especially if it's taken care of well. You know, this is still usable. It's not lakefront, it's not creek front and river front. But it's somewhat interesting and, and the, the scene that we showed just a few minutes ago, you could overlook this and while you wouldn't, it wouldn't be usable, it has some intrinsic value to the right buyer. But the next section I'm going to talk about is some water that is the money shot and actually is the gem of this entire property. You know, another thing that I think a lot of people overlook and maybe don't give as much value to as I do, but that is uh, edge and unlimited sight lines and, and seclusion when it comes to properties. And that's what you got here. This is a great location here. The slope of the tim of the field slopes down a little bit. I see another beautiful building site up there, a little bit of wooded area. And this actually, this wood line here actually slopes down to the water that's down below here. So um, I'm, I've seen probably three, four, five different options to build on this property. And it really appeals to everybody. If you want to buy this entire property as a whole, uh, you're going to, you're going to pay, you know, that wholesale price, that, that 40 acre parcel with the influences of transitional land pushing up that 40 acre parcel. So as I said earlier, you know, the average price per acre in this uh, area around me is probably 5,500 to $6,500 an acre. 
but this is transitional land and it's going to sell for more because of these beautiful sight lines, these beautiful building sites all over this uh, property. This is transitioning into something else. So if you're a buyer looking for a larger parcel, you might get a little bit of a discount on the, on the wholesale prices, we'll call it. But usually the sellers are going to build into the price what could be done because it's transitioning into something else from tillable to somebody's dream hobby farm, let's say. There's going to be a price uptick for that. And as a realtor, as a land specialist, we have to kind of take a look at that. We have to take that into account of what this could be because it does influence what the buyers are willing to pay. Well, this, this is the money shot. I tell you, if there's one feature that people love and that's water, a view of water. And this is a great example of water that's valuable. It's not very busy. There's no homes. There's only, the only evidence of human beings on this entire uh, lake was the trail that I mowed and somebody's got a little paddle boat that probably somebody owns some land on the other side. Other than that, this is completely unobstructed. It's quiet. There's wood ducks been getting up. We got nice, clean, clear water, always an asset. Not a lot of algae and, and, it, and it looks like, you know, this is a dry year. And this looks 15, 16 feet deep, even on the driest year that we've had in a long time. So on a wet year, we're gonna have more water here and this is gonna be a great feature. When you combine that with this rolling topography, uh, a lot of sight line breakup, uh, it just makes a really, really valuable property. So let's break this down on some of the lessons that we talk about on this channel to identify what a good looking property is and then we'll come up with a price at the end here. So stick around, we're almost there. I'm gonna tell you what I think this property should be listed at. Okay, number one, the geographic travel corridors. We talk about this a lot. Those are those major arteries that are coming out of the metro area. And I'm in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro. I'm in the western side of that, or eastern side of that into western Wisconsin. But you have these same corridors in many of the cities where you live. Look at the, the major arteries that are coming out of the cities. Those are the routes that people like to travel and then eventually move. So that brings up geo, uh, demographic travel and growth corridor combinations. People want to come out, they're traveling, they want to live out there, and they want to get uh, two to five miles from those corridors. So they're not on the travel route, but they're easily accessible. And that's what we got here. We're about maybe two to three miles from Highway 35, just north of the, north of the town of Somerset, and an easy 30 to 45 minute commute, which is our next feature. Anytime you talk about the concentric circles in a pond, you drop the pebble in and the circles go out, that first 30 minute circle the 45 minute is always the coveted area and that's exactly where we're at. People can move out here, have a little space and, uh, and build their dream. And then finally, just the diversity of this property. There's so much opportunity, multiple building sites. You can have views of the water, you can have views of the timber, even the point here that I'm standing on is wooded. There's a possibility to build there and there might even be more property that could be purchased with this property if, if you're interested. So. We talked about some of the prices and before I came out here, I did a little research and I found that the agricultural land out here was selling probably between uh, $5,500 and $6,500 an acre. But this is not agricultural land anymore, guys. This is transitioning into something else and it's bumping up. Um, I've been selling lots of land out here. I sold one for $9,200, a couple for $10,000 an acre, and I sold one for $13,192 an acre. This is on par with those and even better. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna throw a price in this property and I don't know if it'll ever show up on the market at this level, but I think we're at $12,000 an acre land all day long. If the buyer wants to be a little aggressive, he'll be at the $10,000 an acre if he wants to uh, get it uh, done a little quicker. And if he wants to hold on to a little bit, you might even squeak out $15,000 an acre, but that's gonna be pushing it. The sweet spot, 12,000 bucks an acre all day long. This is a great property. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed that tour and you like this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in buying land, I'd like to be your guy in the land business. Give me a call if you're in Northwest Wisconsin. But if you're anywhere in the United States and you're looking for help buying land, I've got 300 brothers and sisters all across the nation with Whitetail Properties Real Estate. We'd be glad to help you. Call me, I'll get you in touch with them and you're gonna be good to go because we have the finger on the pulse of the land market. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'm Neil Hogger. I'm a land specialist for Whitetail Properties Real Estate, and you've been watching The American Landman.